Um, it's Friday, the something of June fourth. Uh, no, no. Um, I was going to go out on Nibbler today and have a little bit of an adventure, probably uh, you know down into the Breckens or something like that. But um, these arrived yesterday, and those are the uh, original Kawasaki clutch springs. Because if you remember, I said the clutch was a little bit heavy, wasn't happy with it. Now that was mainly, I was doing, uh, like riding through villages and stuff, up and down the gearbox a lot. Um, I never used the clutch going up the gearbox. Um, it's perfectly safe and it's dead alien when you tell somebody that you can do that if they're used to driving a car. I, I know folks that go down the gearbox without the clutch as well, but I wouldn't advise that. Um, so what I'm going to do is now we've got the original springs is I mean these should be absolutely perfect but we're going to measure them with the calipers against the springs I'm going to take out because those springs could be a heavy duty replacement um, which you know given the age of the bike highly likely it's a really sort of I don't know it's one of these mods that everybody recommends and sort of 99% of the time it's just not necessary the clutch springs are a wearable service item and they only have something like a millimeters difference between it being good and it being no good and a quick visual look won't tell you that you need to get the calipers on them and measure them of course you think a millimeter is not much difference but in the state of a spring it's a lot and it can be enough to cause the clutch to slip and together with worn plates uh, it's even worse and also this is going to give me the opportunity to check the orientation of the clutch plates because I think I mentioned in the last video most clutch plates have like square friction blocks and these were angled and I'd never seen that before and I've done quite a few bike clutches and they've all been square so I looked at the Kawasaki Soivis manual and they need to go in a particular orientation. Now whether that's because it scoops a bit of oil up or helps keep it a bit cooler or something, I don't know. But it's going to give us an opportunity to make sure that it's it's in, in the right orientation. And the method that I'm going to use is I've got the bike on the side stand because I took the main stand off for the exhaust. Um, don't be afraid to do this most motorcycles and we'll say that in quotes in <coughs> most motorcycles you can uh, replace clutch plates and work on that side uh, just by having it on the side stand not all but most and you'll you'll get the slightest of oil drips if any at all when you take the cover off and most of that is just what sort of beaded against the cover and the gasket so you'll get minimum oil loss um, if at all um, and that's the way I'm going to use so without further ado we'll um, bottom fairing's got to come off side panel's got to come off obviously the side cover's got to come off I'm going to do that again I enjoyed that side cover's going to come off um, and then that will expose the clutch and start a chain mechanism and that's another mod I'm going to be doing later now I used white grease on the gasket I'm doing that again I'm talking with my hands white grease on the gasket so that side cover should just come off without damaging the gasket because that's the whole idea of the white grease um, so it's reusable um, but at a later date I'm going to be fitting the it's probably going to be the James Compton customs um, starter chain tensioner mod very well known in zx10 zzr even up to zrx's and stuff like that all of them share this same tensioner and all of them basically have the potential to destroy the clutch basket uh, when we're in at the tensioner you'll see it and i'll describe it and i'll describe what the mod does when the mod gets here we'll obviously film doing it because you know I don't use specialist tools I just use probably what you guys have got hanging around I mean I call a Dremel a specialist tool because not everybody has a Dremel um, 
but you will need a Dremel or similar grinding wheel or something like that um, you can do it with a file to do the tensioning but that's going to be on a later video that's got to come all the way from America and it is the best quality one I've seen it's absolutely beautiful so we'll get these in or rather we won't get these in we'll get the old ones out we'll check the clutch orientation and that clutch now has however many miles on it and it bear in mind it was only like 25 pounds um, I'll put the link in this video from where I got it it was from a motorcycle shop on eBay I think they were called scooters and motorcycles but we'll put the link in as I did with the previous video because if that clutch is wearing okay because bear in mind just like springs clutches don't have that big a wear limit there's there's really not much between it being uh, brand new and worn out but it's enough over all the discs with weak springs or anything like that that it's going to make a noticeable difference um, so we'll do that so um, nice clean we're going to call this the studio yes. um, Mrs Shed come in and she gutted this shed and we've now got a skip's worth of rubbish um, and she's threatening to do the other one so you know she will do it at some point she did it the other year actually well well pretty locked down and um, you completely transformed it because I I'm a bit of a, a weird creature as anybody knows me will attest but I am really untidy and I don't want to be I try my best to put tools away after I've used them and I clean them and I oil them and all this lot which usually if I'm in the right frame of mind I'll do but sometimes I tend to work on something a bit too long get a bit too tired and I'll just leave stuff out and then it's left out basically until I, I get the chance to go back to it and sometimes that can be you know weeks so usually after it doesn't take long she has to come in and clean the shed again um, and I'm not allowed anywhere near it I do the heavy lifting um, but she does all the organizing and I have to just sit in a chair going yes I'm keeping that no I'm not keeping that it's a good system and I don't get in the way because I'm quite fond of my testicles but um, yeah we'll do that but uh, the idea of this space here is if I need to take anything off the cars the bikes whatever or interesting things I get um, asked to look at I can look at them and repair them in here so it's just a different environment um, and it's also probably better for filming because I can probably rig up an overhead camera and stuff in here a lot easier than I can uh, in a shed so um, that's a little update for you oh, what a treat so yeah now these were something like four quid each something like that and all right there'll be some of you now going I can get a full set of heavy duty for eight quid yes you can you can also pay a lot more for some heavy duty ones from tuning shops or from very well established names we've all heard of like EBC and stuff like that um, I mean I paid £25 for the clutch you'd probably pay I don't know let's let's pick a ballpark I've seen ZX clutches and most motorcycle clutches go for anywhere between 50 90 100 quid plus depends who the vendor is because I have noticed a lot of them are exactly the same product and one can be selling 30 40 pounds more than the other now if you don't know you don't know but 10 minutes on the internet these days can save you a fortune and I've said before if you pay cheap you pay twice well part of the reason why I put that clutch in is to either prove or disprove that theory in a lot of things it's true and we've proved it um, you know I've replaced stuff two or three times because I went cheap because the budget wasn't there and when I could afford the good stuff but good stuff but these are the original Kawasaki Springs and I think you can see whether you'll pick it up in the light they are painted green on a section so we know they're the originals 
because obviously it's Kawasaki green, isn't it, boys and girls? So there's six, and I'm going to uh, take you off the mountain in a minute. But there's six of these, and these feel pretty strong as they are as standard. Because bear in mind, when that bike was developed, they were going after being the world's fastest production bike so it had to have a strong clutch from the factory and the only time you ever really get problems with bike clutches is if you start tuning the bikes or the clutch is sort of knackered in the first place or you ride to such a style that you knacker clutches because there's plenty of them about as well um, motorbike clutches can last a long long time I mean there's bikes out there with not moon mileage but high mileage for motorbikes which are still on the same clutches it's like everything else regular oil changes because as your clutch wears it's putting crap in the oil you know as well as engine wear and because the gearbox especially on Japanese motorbike are different on Harley Davidson's different on old British stuff but it runs in the same oil as the engine so that cork that's being worn away or whatever it is it looks like cork it might be something completely different that is going into your engine oil hopefully your filters catching it so that that's part of the importance of a regular oil change as well it's just to get rid of all that i mean usually if you change the clutch on a bike it's good practice to change the oil and filter anyway um even if you've done it you know sort of I mean, some people change the oil every thousand miles or something like that. Um, that's fine if that's your little regime, that's up to you. Won't do any harm at all. But bear in mind that every time you, you take that sump plug out or etc., you're weakening the thread. And it's the same with spark plugs. I only really replace spark plugs if they require replacement or at the manufacturer's service time. I don't do it at every service because you're weakening uh, the whole. Uh, um, and it's like if you have ignition issues and all this like you can generally work out through a process of elimination which cylinder it is and I know it's very common practice in the classic car world especially with the, some of the high-end stuff that if they've identified that it's a faulty spark plug they will only replace that spark plug because as I said they don't want to risk uh, weakening the spark plug threads or anything like that any more than they have to because we've all had bikes where literally King Kong's big brothers put the spark plugs in or tighten the axles up or something like that you know spark plugs usually you'll seat them by hand just twirl them in you can get a, a bit of rubber garden hose or something and just twirl them in when you first start putting them in you have to be so gentle make sure you're not cross threaded and then go in and when it's seated there's a crush washer just like really what's on your brakes and stuff and you seat that and then I was always told literally a quarter turn from that with a ratchet and that is enough I've seen people do you know three quarter turns they give it a right good gorilla in and then they wonder why they can't get the plugs out later or they strip the threads the majority of bike engines being aluminium it's it's easier to strip the threads than what you think so let's have a look at these new springs i'm just going to take you off now because i've got you on a fancy clip right these are the new springs six of as you can see all bang uniform or you would do if the cameraman got his act together so we're going to caliper these when we take the old ones out and we'll see the difference um it's something like a millimetre but what I'll do um, I'll look at the Kawasaki service manual and I'll see exactly what the service wear limit for these is because nine times out of ten people don't change these they don't realize they're a service item they just think oh it's a spring and um, not necessarily done with every clutch change it depends how often you get through clutches clutches can last if you're heavy handed a couple of thousand miles or they can last tens of thousands of miles but even in that case if the plates are okay you still got to check these 
So we'll do that then. Finally, he says, gets round to it. So guys, next job, take the clutch cover off and just give a quick wipe because you don't want anything falling in. <laughs> this cover wasn't uh, it wasn't pristine to begin with. Um, so just do that. Now what I've done is I've put a very clean catch pan underneath. <laughs> we should get actual minimum oil loss. Um, obviously if we do lose any oil I'm going to top it up with brand new fresh oil. If you don't have a choice and you have to use the oil that comes out the top back up, because uh, you know you might have to change the clutch at the side of the road, you never know, do you? Um, always use a spotless catch pan. I don't need to, and it wouldn't really be shoestring shed if this was organised. So, next job, take this off. see guys the putting the white grease on the gasket it's not really damaged it tiny bit there it's nothing um, nice clean separation I have to do the minimal of clean up on that I don't know if the other camera is picking it up but just in case we'll film this on two this is the um, basically the starter chain chains always get tensioned on their slack side and you can probably see look this has already had an issue at some point in its life with the uh, tensioner now I happen to know this tensioner has been replaced because there was a receipt for it um, and basically what this does when this is going all spinny spinny wooey wooey -wee -wee, this is the tensioner and it's it's under spring tension and this rod with a little shoulder only allows it to move so much trouble is what happens is that this fails or snaps or something like that so this whole assembly here can fall back into the clutch plate now as you can see I mean this was like this when we got the bike but this clutch has had a bit of an issue with it in the past and my betting's on that bit or this bit so what we're going to be doing uh, the Compton uh, class uh, Com Compton customs get me teeth in bit is basically what it is is you dremel out this rivet these are rivets these are eight mil bolts and you drill that rivet out and then you put um, his product inside here and it prevents this from going down any further you can do it with a hollow bolt but um, these look really good and then you replace that with a bolt and lock nut and what, we need down, what I've done now guys is I put the bike in first gear so we can get the clutch springs out now when you start taking these out you back them out systematically like a wheel nut so a bit on that 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 don't just buzz them all out
the good news is at least I've installed the outer plate correctly as you can see that's from the service manual I'll put a picture in as well but I am going to go through all the plates just make sure I've uh, got the correct orientation now the thing is with the ZX it's got quite a deep clutch basket and to get some of the end plates out I use a pair of these and if you don't know what that is it's a seal pick and it's usually use it to take uh, sort of oil seals out and stuff like that but it's really handy for seating seals as well like brake caliper seals etc but what you need to do is to get a pair right behind the bottom plates here just to bring drag them forward one each side and you'll be able to drag the end plates out easily so we'll get on and remove the plates so that's all the clutch plates out as you can see that's the bottom of the hub there um, so when you're replacing you start with the friction so you go friction steel friction steel friction steel basically till you run out of plates and you should should end up with a friction at the end and on the Kawasaki here uh, not true for all bikes but the end plate all the rest sort of slot into this groove but the end plate slots into this groove on the Kawasaki and when I first took the clutch apart to put the new one in the old one had actually been installed incorrectly and all the plates were in there and I think it was Tim who spotted that out so good spot Tim you were dead right um, but what I have noticed is that I was on about the the tensioner mod and I know he's had a tensioner replaced because it, it's in uh, part of the receipts one thing I have noticed is that the um, there's obviously evidence of it meeting uh, the spring plate which is the plate we take off there and if we look closely I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up there's evidence that that's been catching so uh, I think before we actually launch the clutch Nibbler won't be going back on the road until the um, the adapter is fitted it's not worth the risk it's already obviously hitting so you know the pin on the hand grenade's already been pulled why sit there holding it um, so this video obviously is going to be more than one part um, I've ordered the clutch line so we're going to replace the clutch line as well but what this does this just gives me an opportunity to get some brake clean or something like that um, and these where these tangs um, rails whatever you want to call them where the clutch plates slide on they can get a little bit sticky especially if the oil's been left in it a while I mean you know this was sat for what we know four or five years so um, I'm gonna quickly clean all these up and what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use a cotton bud with some brake clean or something like that on it something that evaporates and we'll just clean each of these tags up because that's actually old oil and it's sticky and that's probably the reason why our clutch plates stick but he won't be going anywhere until we've done the mod on this because we're just asking for it to break so we're um, on to the springs now guys you can't tinker without two crumpets crumpets original called pikelets been around since well Moses was in nappies originally didn't have bubbles they were like a flat pancake they reckon the name because they're, they're called pikelets as well and they reckon that came from pie a little pie a pilot in the realm of Queen Victoria somebody decided to add I think it was bicarbonate of soda and yeast that forms CO2 bubbles when it's being cooked and that's how you get all the holes in it 
but uh, thoroughly British and uh, delicious. Anyway, back to Tinkerage. I'll have the other camera going for this one as well. So you might get something arty farty like picture in picture. I'm going to show you the clutch spring plate and how the adjuster damages it. And we're also going to caliper up the springs. So I might take you out on the mount occasionally and just show you what I'm doing. As well as um, having Captain Static come there. So hopefully I've framed you correctly. Probably not. And uh, there will probably be some interference because my uncle's on the trot about. And usually when you're filming a video, you'll be about five seconds into finishing it. And it will come and uh, it will come and sing or something like that. So I'm just pre-warning you. So um, I think the first thing we'll do is um, look at the springs. Obviously these here, because he's whistling already up. They're the new ones. Now when you take the springs out, there'll be a button that sits on the spring, inside the spring and the bolt that goes through it. When you tension these up, the final torque is really low. It's something like between eight and 10 foot pounds. Um, it's really low, so you need, I mean, working on a bike, you need more than one torque wrench anyway. A low, I have a low one that goes up to about 30, and then I've got a bigger one, goes up to about 160, something like that. But there's your buttons. Just out of interest, I'm just going to put one of the old springs next to it. Now you can tell these aren't Kawasaki springs. There's no paint on them. They're probably something like an EBC heavy duty. But they look the same height. But you know, they might have been fitted just before the bike was parked up. So anyway, we'll measure them. And if they're still in spec, they're okay for a spare set anyway. But those look like heavy duty to me. And um, I don't want heavy duty springs in it, to be honest. So we'll get the magic caliper. Now I've got here, uh, straight from the service manual, when the springs are new, they should be 33.2 uh, length. Uh, my calipers aren't super duper accurate they're not digital or anything but the you know they're good enough um but the service limit is 32.1 so not 1.1 millimeter which sometimes by eye you won't pick up especially as you get older um, friction plates that's the service limit as well friction plates anywhere between 2.9 and 3.1 is serviceable and 2.75 is the limit now that clutch only has whatever mileage we've done since the MOT on it because it was only it's only sort of eight mile to my MOT place um, so that's gonna be fine I'm not worried about the clutch plates they look okay so um, I'm just gonna get the caliper on these and see what's what out of interest we'll measure a new one as well so let's set it roughly where it should be just over 32 yep they're bang on absolutely bang on and one of these ah you can see the difference now look the caliper is set to the new spring that's the old spring so these even if they're heavy duty are either the incorrect length or they're worn bear in mind it's obviously a 30 odd year old bike um, the mileage on it isn't actually all that high because the mileage that's shown on the clocks at the minute is false that's a replacement clock and that's showing something like 41,000 miles the bike we think was originally Irish and it's only something like 
I think 20,000, 24,000 kilometers on that clock. I'll have to have a look, I'll have to dig it out. But that's not to say that if somebody wasn't heavy handed, you can see the difference. Well, you would do if I hadn't moved the bloody caliper. <laughs> so let's lock that off at the new sprint. Right, that's there. Put the old spring in. Yeah, there's still a difference. There's still about a millimetre. I don't know if you'll pick that up. So those old springs are no good. They are at their service limit. And this is the, the pitfall that we get into. So no good. Good. So that's all right. And what I'll do now on the other camera, I'll show you the clutch plate and where the um, adjuster has been hitting and how we have very narrowly avoided catastrophe because these things hand grenade they absolute hand grenade so if we have a look on the plate stay there you little bugger um, you can see where it's been catching and that was already there and I know he'd had an adjustment done so the conclusion is that adjuster um, needs the uh, adapter fitted to it. I'm going to put a little picture up. It's by a guy called James Compton, who basically builds race um, Kawasaki racing bikes. Uh, the big, you know, the, like the big Eddie Lawson reps and stuff like that. He does that. It's the same generation engine, basically. Um, you know, the clutch and all that lot are all the same in them so he's come up with a beautiful billet alley part which will stop that adjuster going that far um, and then it should never ever cause trouble again the fitting of it you dremel out a rivet um, put his adapter in and put it back together with a, you know a bolt and a lock nut with thread lock and it should never ever cause a problem again but see that could go at any time that could have gone on the fast lane in the m1 and obliterated the clutch it's even got potential to lock it up um, and I don't know about you but I haven't got the reactions of a 19 year old anymore you know my days of two strokes right along with two strokes with the fingers covering the clutch at all times have gone um, but I'm glad I've found it I'm really glad I've found it um, sad I won't be going out on Nibbler today, but we've potentially avoided an utter catastrophe and a very, very expensive one. So for the price of the adjuster, I mean, I'll put the price down. I think it's about $60, so obviously less in pounds, um, plus shipping, of course, and he does ship worldwide. And um, I think that will be the end of this video, because the next one is obviously it's going to be I can put the clutch back together with the springs but you've seen how it comes apart it goes back together the same way um, what you do have to be wary of some older Hondas like CB 750s and stuff like that you will find sort of in the middle of the clutch as you take the plates out you'll find one where you'll have two of the steel plates mm, riveted together and you think it looks like a bodge job um, it isn't some bikes have you'll notice on the friction plates you probably have a couple of thicker ones uh, that's normal not every bike has it but they tend to go in the middle of the clutch pack so as you're putting the plates in put those in the middle and this one from Honda this double one goes in the middle and it's designed um, to stop clutch chatter um, and for all intents and purposes it works anyway what I did find out when I took the friction plates out I had actually put about four of them in the wrong orientation now the clutch will still work obviously but those grooves are there for a reason whether it's to uh, distribute oil more efficiently cool the clutch I don't know uh, but it must have a function otherwise they don't do it sometimes you'll get a completely normal clutch which is all sort of square friction blocks 
and then the very outer plate will be like that and I think it's to pick up oil um, so I can put the clutch back together that's that's not an issue because we've got the new springs uh, the screws are okay the clutch can go back and what I might do then is just take take the adjuster off it's two eight mil bolts um, and that's off and that can be ready to be worked on so we'll um, we will reconvene I apologize for the noise guys I'm just gonna stick the uh, the clutch back in so just we've not got bits floating around and all this lot um, I've took the adjuster off two eight mil bolts and um, we can refit that with the clutch in so it doesn't matter but uh, yeah it definitely needs the uh, adapter anyway just a quick word on clutch plates if you didn't already know because um, some of you may be new to motorcycles and Japanese motorcycles but Japanese bike clutches for the most part run in the engine oil unlike a Harley which is, has its own gearbox oil and primary drive oil and all this lot so or you know um, old British bikes you'd have a separate gearbox etc the clutch gearbox everything on this bike is the same lubrication system and the same oil so always only use a motorcycle oil if you put a car oil in a Japanese bike you'll get clutch slip all day long car oils are not designed for the environment of a bike engine they're designed for a lower revving car engine um, so always use a motorcycle oil and for the ZX10 and most Japanese bikes 1040 is usually the oil it depends on what climate you're in um, but you can go 2050 stuff like that newer bikes can take a you know a five grade and stuff but they tend to always be multi-grade they're always SAE or Jap spec or JAE or whatever they call it um, but also always fit the new clutch plates wet so it's a great time to do an oil and filter change anyway but before you put the clutch plates in soak them overnight in fresh motorcycle engine oil otherwise what happens is you've got a dry clutch in there you go to start the bike up and you've got a completely bone dry clutch um, and basically you'll, you'll burn the plates out you'll, you'll take thousands of miles off the um, off the life of it so always make sure that they're wet when you put them back in you can see guys the final plate on the ZX10 goes opposite there all the rest of the plates it goes there instead also if you do need to take this hub out uh, you'll need the locking tool which is dead easy um, but Kawasaki state that this hub nut here is a single use only because it's a self locking nut so if you're doing that it might be an idea just to order yourself a nut be on the safe side because you do not want that backing off um, and that's it and there's another little trick I've never had to do on another bike but it says so in the Kawasaki service manual we're going to put the spring plate on and if you notice on the spring plate there's a circlip which um, you don't usually come across to be fair because the, the designs differ but basically they're, they're sort of all the same but there's a circlip there and we need to pop that out because we're going to put the spring plate on first and then we're going to put the thrust washer and the roller bearings on and then what you have to do is put grease on the end of this it's uh, molybendum disulfide multi-purpose high temp grease and you just put that on the end of the nipple because the push rod from the slave cylinder is coming through to meet this it acts on that but what you do on this is you put the spring plate on get her all taut down on the springage and then what you do you fit the thrust washer etc but how you do it before you put this in is that you actually very very gently squeeze the clutch and then introduce this and then everything settles in where it should be so uh, we'll crack on and do that guys so guys and girls um, 
that was as far as I got and I've put the cover back on just to keep any crap out basically but this is the adjuster that I've removed in fact I'm going to just um, move you around because I'm actually standing at the side of the camera it's mostly a bit. so right, let's let's go for that right this is the adjuster and that obviously sits like that with the chain running across it now the blade has like uh, you can probably see it it's a gray color like a teflon insert i'm guessing it is and the chain runs on that there's a little bit of wear on this but it's still quite serviceable now obviously this is under spring tension and it's a good old spring as well you see the size of it there look um and it's this not necessarily this rod that's the problem it's this because as you can see that's under spring tension too and even though it's a small spring it is quite hefty but it's this that's the problem because you can see the small shoulder on there and i don't know whether i'm going to do this one handed but that goes through there anyway anyway this rod rides through the whole at the bottom of this oh i had it then little bugger as you can probably not see and what happens is when this goes over tension this basically moves down too much um, obviously it's that's orientation this is allowed to move down too much so what the adapter does it replaces this part we have to grind this rivet off take it off and then the billet aluminium part basically slides on here and then fits in here with a um, bolt lock nut thread lock and basically what that designs what a little spider or a little bagger where are you go on you little sod I hope it's a money spider I could do with it anyway um, it replaces that and it basically makes this sit higher up so this can't jump out and obviously we're replacing this part so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to order the part and when she comes in from that there America um, we'll fix it but that then should cure the adapter so with that guys enjoy your weekend um have a beer for me oh damn me little spider look little bugger um and then uh, we will reconvene this video when the clutch line comes in and the adapter comes in i'm calling it a, a, an adapter because i suppose you are adapting something to work better but the clutch line uh, when that comes in um, I tell you what, I'll put a link to it already. I got it from a uh, chap on eBay. Uh, they are factory appointed manufacturers for Hell Lines. And you know, Hell Lines have been around a while. They're the same quality as, you know, Goodridge, Earls, the people that you've heard of. And their kit, even though it was the same price as what some people were charging just for the line. Uh, comes with stainless banjos and crush washers and I've said obviously I will mention them in that video but I'll, I'll put the link down now because you can have a choice of covers on the line as well you can have you know clear red uh, green whatever blue so you can do that but I'll put the link down and um, if you want to replace your clutch line because that the clutch line itself can be problematic because it's two rubber lengths joined by a rigid section which is hidden behind the frame what happens is and the same happens with rubber brake hoses is that they can deteriorate inside and close up just like arteries can close up now this can have a couple of effects one is it can make your brakes or your clutch harder to pull because you've reduced the diameter of the bore 
so it's more effort to shove the fluid through. Conversely, and more dangerously, this happens a lot on older cars as well, is that half the reason you can get a sticking caliper isn't necessarily that the caliper is bad. It can be the hose, because it's so uh, constricted now, or damaged internally, the fluid can't return. So it actually retains pressure, which of course people then misdiagnose as a sticky caliper and stuff like that. Well, if you don't sort it quickly, it will bugger everything. It will bugger your discs, it'll overheat your calipers, and your boiling fluid, brake fluid. So you'll probably get brake fade a lot quicker. Brake fluid is one of them things you need to change regularly. I mean, maximum, I'd say every three, four years. Um, because it's hydroscopic, it attracts water. So you must do that. So on that um, nanny state <laughs> safety notice, um, I will uh, love you and leave you. So thanks for joining us again in the shed. Don't forget to check out the uh, Teespring stores for merchandise, stuff like that. Um, we've just added a load of uh, Rover 75 uh, merch as well using the Rover 75 badge, which is a lovely item. Um, obviously, we've got ZX10 you know, mugs, hoodies and all that lot. So check them out. Every little helps, guys. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next video.